Hello, this is Brian Pash, CEO of PCG Digital Marketing, and this is an introductory video for members of the Automotive ZMOT Study Group. I want to thank you for signing up and in committing yourself <clears throat> to learning new things about automotive digital marketing and how the consumer shopping behavior has changed. And over the next few weeks, we'll be sharing specific insights with you and also helping you use our budgeting calculator to really truthfully look at where you're investing for your advertising and marketing dollars. The concept of automotive zero moment of truth was first introduced by Google in a free book that I encourage everyone to download. This book can be downloaded to your Kindle, uh, it can be downloaded to your iPad, or just as a PDF. Uh, if you just go to zeromomentoftruth.com, you'll be able to download the book. I want to encourage you to have your whole sales team, marketing team, executive team read this book. The reason why is that it starts to create a different perspective on how consumers are shopping today, and it also introduces some important data uh, that challenges the current structure of automotive marketing budgets. So let's get started. Procter & Gamble first introduced the term first moment of truth, or FMOT, discussing how consumers shop for a traditional product in a, say, grocery store. For example, stimulus would be radio, TV, print. And when someone walked into the supermarket, let's just say looking for a fabric softener, and when they're presented with 20 choices, they have to make a decision <clears throat> on what to purchase. And Procter & Gamble said that moment when they reach, say, for the downy fabric softener because maybe they were reminded how baby soft smooth your clothes will be and how well they would smell, that that was the first moment of truth. They made their decision in the store, and this is extremely important. Let me say it again. In traditional advertising models, a consumer went to the store to make a decision. The second moment of truth is when they went home, used the fabric softener, and told their friends about the product. Now, for car dealers, before the internet, stimulus brought a consumer in to the dealership. Maybe they were interested in purchasing a Chevy truck because stimulus said that Chevy trucks were reliable and well-priced. But when they walked in, they may not have been sure of exactly what model to purchase or, or maybe a different brand, uh, excuse me, a different model, and they would ask for literature and discuss options because that information wasn't readily available. Today, that is no longer the case. So traditional car dealer marketing, it was radio, TV, cable, you, you can see the list here. And the first moment of truth was when they walked into that dealership building. There was no internet. You basically called or walked in, and it was that first moment of truth, how they were greeted, what information was provided, how their questions were answered, which made them decide which car to purchase. And then when they left the dealership, the vehicle's performance, your service and support of the vehicle resulted in word of mouth referrals. And the number of people that your consumers before the internet could influence was relatively small. It wasn't common for a disgruntled customer to take out a paid ad in the newspaper uh, complaining about bad service or bad mouthing the dealership. So whether the service was positive or the experience, the second moment of truth was positive or negative, 
it had very little impact in the community. But zero moment of truth is a new phenomena. Here are some examples that you could read. But basically, it is not uncommon today to see someone in your lot with a smartphone in hand, looking at a car, checking your price, checking the ratings and reviews. It's not uncommon to go into an electronic store and see someone with their smartphone looking up the consumer ratings on an inkjet printer or a flat screen TV. Today, before consumers even contact you, and here's the big change, they're making a decision. So before they call you or walk into your dealership, they are gathering information during this period called zero moment of truth, where what they find on the internet influences their choice dramatically. And we'll take a look at the data that talks about that. So here's what today's marketing, advertising, consumer shopping model looks like. Now, of course, we are going to talk about the differences that apply to the automotive industry that this ZMOT book does not completely address. And we'll have some industry experts join our study sharing how the ZMOT book just has to be appended or modified for the automotive industry. But this, this graph is pretty accurate. So there's stimulus. So the OEMs do their radio, TV, print. You may be doing some print advertising. And that causes a consumer to start the zero moment of truth process where they're looking at blogs. They're looking at reviews. They're looking at reviews of your dealership. They're looking at safety ratings, recall information. Uh, the value of the car over time, their service costs, and that information influences whether they even walk into your store. They may walk into a different dealership or brand because of what they found online, which means that if your brand is not visible during the ZMOD experience, you could be out of the game. Meaning, if someone is stimulus-based reaction to, say, shop for a Kia because they saw the cute, you know, hamster dancing commercial, and they go online and start researching Kia and then look locally at Kia, and you have no reviews, no videos, no blogs, nothing really to differentiate why they should come to your store. But a, a competing dealer did. This dealer had testimonial videos. They've answered questions about the Kia versus other competing brands. They've talked about maintenance and uh, reliability. And because of that information, the consumer during the ZMOT decides to walk in or call or submit a lead to your competitor. Secondly, the second moment of truth today, and dealers do not have to be reminded of this, is so powerful. Once someone experiences your brand, your car, their ability to influence others during their ZMOT period is amplified thousand times. You know the power of consumer reviews. Today, consumer's second moment of truth can be experienced uh, by writing a blog, positive or negative, going to sites like Google Places, Dealerator, Edmunds.com, RipoffReport.com, and posting their experience, which then becomes searchable for others. Dealers today have to understand that the second moment of truth experience is so important because if their processes, if their customer service, if their advertising and follow through is not consistent and positive, 
and with the greatest respect for second moment of truth, they will find problems online. So today, zero moment of truth is OEM websites, third-party review sites, rating websites, blogs, videos on YouTube, your client testimonials, third-party testimonials, price comparison websites, safety and recall websites. All of those things are part of the zero moment of truth, and we're going to be talking about that over the next few weeks. And just a reminder that that word of mouth is now a digital word of mouth, which means your customer's experience during the second moment of truth feeds. It's the fuel for content, videos, and data that the next buyer finds online. If you are not prepared, if you are not feeding the ZMOT stream with positive information, positive testimonials, brand differentiation, why they should shop at your dealership, you're missing great opportunities. In the book, Winning the Zero Moment of Truth by Jim Lachinsky, he, he states this, you know, has this ever happened to you? And, and I speak to dealers around the country and, and they say, Brian, yes, people walk in armed with uh, costs, option packages, leather, colors, exterior colors. It's obvious that people are shopping before they even choose you online. This is proof that the zero moment of truth is real and engaging. And what are those popular zero moment of truth websites? Well, this is just a small fraction of the sites that influence customers during the zero moment of truth, do not minimize what Facebook and Twitter can do. There's some in interesting data coming to the marketplace over the next year, and it will finally document what consumers are doing prior to visiting your site, which websites they visited, which cars were they looking at, were they looking at your Facebook? Did they read your Twitter tweets? Be very interesting because there are some companies that are providing data for specifically documenting what the zero moment of truth is for consumers. How do you invest in zero moment of truth? Well, by improving your online reviews, and most dealers have a long way to go, and we'll be talking about how to do that publishing blog content, how about price comparison charts, feature comparison. You can get all this from your OEM and customize it for your market. Are you talking about your work in the community? Are you talking about the excellent customer service staff that you have? How about publishing videos, video testimonials, walk around videos, service tips, safety tips videos? Are you seeing as the subject matter expert in your town. Are you using social media to look out for consumers with questions about cars and car buying decisions? Are you engaging your customers, amplifying your brand using popular social media tools? Are you pushing your inventory out to more places so consumers can find your cars? Are you using microsites to match your brand with popular searches. These are all things you could do to interact with consumers during the zero moment of truth. And then the first moment of truth, right, when they decide to contact you, then improving your phone skills, your lead response times, your sales and listening skills in the dealership. How are you following up? Are you giving up on your customers too soon? We're going to look into data today quickly about how long consumers are really in the sales process. Are you adding chat to your website? Are you allowing text marketing to be a way that consumers can connect with you? These are all things we'll be talking about. But here is probably one of the most profound slides. Google asked car shoppers and all shoppers what were 
influential in helping you make a purchase decision. Stimulus was definitely there. Zmot was the highest, meaning what were the influencing mediums that made you walk into dealership A and Zmot was the highest. Dealers, listen to me. If Zmot, if zero moment of truth activities are the most powerful influencer, what are you doing to engage the consumer before they reach your dealership? So the bottom line is, is when you look at most car dealer budgets, you'll find that many have less than 20% on digital activities, Zmod activities, and if you look at the influence that Zmod has, you could actually say that those dealers are really not in the game yet. Here is uh, very important. So you may say, well, Brian, in my market, I have a different demographic and it's an older community or it is rural community. Well, let's just throw that out right now. Over all ages, Zmod had the most influence. That means information they found online about your cars, your dealership was the most influential thing in them deciding to contact you. Over all age groups, it was the highest, highest influencer. But when you look at most dealer budgets, and I travel around the country talking to dealers, this is what the budgets look like. A lot of money still on traditional stimulus, very little on zero moment. A good deal of money on, um, you know, the showroom, how the leads are being handled, the phone system, follow-up CRM processes, and just a little bit on second moment. This is the challenge. This is why we're having this study. If Zmot is the most influential source of information for consumers to walk into your dealership, why is that such a low budget priority? So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be giving everyone a special Excel spreadsheet where you'll be able to put in all your expenses and your investments, and we're going to see how they're allocated. We're going to discuss strategies of measurement so you really have a planning tool to really align your marketing dollars with the most potential influence it can have for your dealership. One of the things I want to point out is that I'm not against stimulus, but you have to look at the impact of stimulus versus the impact of internet. And when you read the Zmot book, you'll see this chart. This is the influence of TV ads. Notice in the period of two to three months before, they definitely have a hot spot uh, and the influence is, is no higher than a seven in heat and influence and take a look at the internet, the search engines. The search engines influence consumers the most and starting seven to 12 months before. That means if what they're finding about your dealership today, let's just say a lot of negative reviews, you could be taking yourself out of the game early on, which means that dealers who have ignored zero moment of truth, dealers who have really horrible reviews that have not been responded to, that have not been put in context, that are not balanced with positive reviews, actually may interrupt the sales process for months until they change their policies, engage in in-store reputation management processes, and get consumers back into considering their dealership. Very important. And here's why that's important. If you take a look at automotive shoppers, the peak is around four to six months before they buy the car. They're out there, they're deciding, okay, I want a Jeep Wrangler, who am I gonna deal with? And again, if you're not in the game or if people are telling the consumer not to do business with you, you could be out of the game much earlier than you thought, and it will take months for you to fix that, but we're going to show you how to accelerate that process.
correction. When people were searching during the Zmod experience, these are the top three things they were searching about. So the real question is, is what are you doing on your website to give consumers the information they need to answer these questions? Are you comparing on your website the prices of your car or models with others? Are you talking about the performance compared to other cars or the styling options, the new features that really make this particular model stand out? Most car dealer websites are not addressing the consumer's questions. And here's the thing that should just put the nail in the coffin is that consumers are using over 18 sources to shop for a car and 97% of them said that the ZMOT influenced them. Remember we had that earlier graph of 84% said that ZMOT influenced? For car buyers, it's 97%. Pretty amazing. So how are you going to win the automotive ZMOT behavior of consumers over the course of the next few weeks, we're going to be discussing it. Here's 10 quick ideas that we're going to be talking about. Number one, you have to put someone in charge. And the fact that you joined this study is the beginning of that. But you may not eventually be the person who has to be in charge. But someone has to look out for your dealership online. Someone has to be checking what is out there. What are consumers finding? Is it up to date? Is it really reflecting our dealership positively? Then you need to find out what people are searching for in regards to your brand. Now there's tools we're going to be talking about um, that are going to show you what people are searching for in your market for your brand and how you can use that information because that will allow you to answer the questions that they're searching for and optimize content for zero moment of truth. Meaning if you know that people are comparing the Honda Accord versus the Nissan Sentra, are you publishing a video comparing the price features, styling of the two cars? Are you putting that on a blog post? If people are searching for uh, Jeep Wrangler prices, are you talking about the pricing and options or how does that vehicle compare to others? We're going to be talking about that. And you got to be fast. You've got to be the first person in your market to respond to new models. Like, for example, do you have optimized content and videos and testimonials for all 2012 models that you sell, regardless of whether they're in stock? Um, and I'm going to show everyone in the study the best practices for a powerful video strategy which will connect consumers with your brand with an engaging video. And uh, we're also we talked about mobile. Um, we recently did a study of all mobile website platforms. I'll share with you the best uh, of the best and what you can be doing to enhance your online zero moment of truth for mobile inclined shoppers. Then we're going to talk about opening all the communication channels, chat and text marketing. We want to make sure that when someone decides to connect with you that you're not eliminating some channels that they prefer to talk to you with. And then we're going to be talking about how to use paid search, own search, shared and earned, so reviews, social media, uh, your own blogs and AdWords, Facebook advertising. We're going to show you how to really get your brand out there. And instead of always selling, how about providing information on what consumers are looking for? When was the last time you read a pay-per-click ad campaign that talked about, you know, shopping for a Camry or a Sentra? Look at our comparison tools. So we'll talk about that. Lastly, you can't afford <laughs> to ignore the zero moment of truth, meaning if zero moment of truth activities are determining whether consumer will walk into your store, your multi-million dollar investment in property, human resources, floor planning, making sure everything is compliant with the EPA and OSHA, all those things can mean nothing 
if that consumer is being told online not to call you, that it's a horrible customer experience or that you are not fair. So we're going to talk about the importance of ZMOT. You're going to really be able to ask questions. We'll go through the budgeting and really share some insights to connect with more consumers who are looking for the cars that you sell and the services that you offer. Um, but lastly, keep in mind, I'm not talking pie in the sky. I'm talking about strategies that must convert, meaning there is no sense in putting up a video if you don't add a call to action. There's no sense in putting a price comparative chart out if you are not putting a call to action. So we're going to talk about connecting with consumers during the zero moment of truth and then converting them. Um, and then uh, specifically, we're going to be talking about reputation management processes, uh, Google Plus One, paid advertising. We'll talk about SEO, social media, and blogging, video marketing, how to establish yourself as a local brand expert, how to leverage your charitable enterprises uh, to really improve your zero moment of truth, and then, of course, creative text marketing. So I hope you are excited to be part of the Zero Moment of Truth study. We are opening it up to 100 dealers. In the first 24 hours, we had over 50 dealers sign up. So it looks like we'll be starting very soon. I'll keep everyone in the loop. But I just wanted to give you an introduction on what we're going to be talking about, where this is going, and why Zero Moment of Truth is so important. So would you please take a moment, download the book, and read it. It's only 50 pages. It will go quick and get ready for a very exciting time. Once again, it's Brian Pash, CEO of PCG Digital Marketing. And if you need to contact me, my email is brian at pcgdigitalmarketing.com.